You, if you weren't paying attention to the news, the Pope resigned. Yes. Yes. No need to worry. I'm not eligible to apply. <laughs> so I'm not going anywhere. But there was a moment where I fantasized. <laughs> And I thought to myself, man, that takes a lot of prep time to get ready for church. <laughs> That's way more prep time <laughs> than I need. I'm um, driving down Park Street yesterday, um, a couple days ago, and I'm uh, somewhere between um, uh, Pete's Coffee and the Jack in the Box. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. And so I'm in the middle, uh, right, in, right, right where I'm supposed to be, and somebody in a parked car makes a U-turn in front of me in traffic, right? Completely U-turn from, from parked, not even moving into the car. Parked, moves, whoosh. And uh, so I have a convertible, so my top, it was a nice day the other day, so I had my top down. And I couldn't help myself. What came out of my mouth was, are you insane? No, 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 it wasn't the worst thing I could have said, I could have said, I couldn't say the church thing. <laughs> that is what came out of my mouth. I said, are you insane? And the person standing at the, like, it, it was, there's no bus stop there, but somebody was standing on the street like they belonged where they were standing, and they nodded with me, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they were insane. And, and the person, I'm not sure if he could actually hear me, but our eyes met for a moment oh, oh, oh. just after I screamed at him. And he looked at me like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Which is true, but then it took me probably 20 minutes to come back down to calm. You know, it took me about, and I was, I was talking to Ronnie about this uh, just the other day, it's like, that reaction was so spontaneous, but there was so much of my dad in it. That's not, that's one, it's not the place that I want to practice to be. And two, when we get that agitated, we pump toxins into our body. That take, it could take three hours to get those toxins back out of the body by just breathing, okay? How many of you got agitated by when I told you the story? You got me, you felt yourself get a little rise. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> I didn't mean to leave you with that permanent thing. Just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. So. Frank was my music professor when I studied music theory and composition as an undergraduate. And I had been writing music for a long time before I decided to go back to school to study music officially. So some of you know I have a master's in music theory and composition. So I was writing music that I thought was pretty good. <laughs> Until I met Frank. <laughs> and then he started to look at some of the stuff I wrote. And one particular assignment I brought in, I brought in four or five <coughs> pages, and we laid it out on the piano, and he played through it on the piano. Four pages. He goes, you see this right here? This is so perfect. That's interesting. <laughs> 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 that part there is interesting. What about, what about just the other pages, Frank? No. Awesome. This part is interesting. So that was the kind of nature of our relationship. One time, I brought in some music, he looked at it, and he crashed his head into the piano. <laughs> Why did you bring me to this? <laughs> and on that particular day, I was so angry. I went to the administration building to see what would be required to change my major. <laughs> because I had two more years with this guy.
And he was ruthless with me in that way for all of our relationship. He would not accept anything that was mediocre. He would only accept pure, good, well-worked music. And I like to tell, after that story, I like to say that the best learning for me of the four years that I spent with Frank was that he taught me really about editing and not everything that spins out of my head is worth public consumption. You ever wish you could take something back that came out of your mouth? Oops, did I really say that on my outside voice? It's a little worse when you write it down with musically. It's like, did I really write that bad of a line? Yeah, that was really bad. Now, that was four years in and then two years of a master's degree. I think I actually learned a few things during that time. And I reflected back, because so Frank and I have, have subsequently become friendly and from on good terms, really good terms, but those first couple years were the hardest for me. And I, I said, when I was graduating, he actually sat with me during graduation. He said, Frank, you know, you were not particularly nice to me in the beginning. He said, yeah. But like, and so? <laughs> I said, well, what was that about? He goes, first of all, you came in as an older student thinking you knew stuff. You came in thinking you knew stuff. You weren't just this empty vessel. And I had to really crack you open a little bit. And I knew you could take it. I knew you could take it. I knew you, you would be able to absorb the difficult part I was pushing, pushing you through because you'd be better for it at the other end. I am not recommending that style of learning to anybody. <laughs> but he, it made a lot of sense in reflection of that's, that's part of his personality. It's not, it's not you've never seen me operating that way, but I learned a lot from Frank. And, um, and I'm blessed for having gone through that process. But in the middle of it, I, I wasn't living at choice. I was definitely being a victim of his brutal way of teaching me. Now, if I had gone back to school with a little bit of meditation grounding in me, I, I probably would have survived those moments much better. If I had gone back today, it would be, be great. It's like, oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> But at the time, I was really, I would say, fragile and delicate with regards to what I was creating. And, and for him to just like say, you know, these two measures are the only thing that are interesting <laughs> in this whole section. <laughs> so the value here is to reflect back in choice because who put me in that situation? You enrolled. I enrolled. I put myself in that situation. And I could, have, I could have opted out. I absolutely could have opted out. I could have gone and changed my major. I could, have, I could have changed to public speaking, because guess what? I do a lot of public speaking as well. So I could have easily moved to public speaking. At some point, I had enough understanding of what my passions were that music was really important to me. And I was going to put aside my bruised ego for the moment allow myself to say, okay, there's something good here, I'm going to mine for the gold. And if I could have advised my previous self, I would have advised myself, in those moments when it's difficult, tell me something you're grateful for. Tell me something you're grateful for right here in this moment, because when you get into those difficult moments, when you find those moments hard, going to gratitude frees you up from the thing that's hard. It changes your body chemistry, it changes your emotional mood, and you start to find yourself in gratitude as opposed to in victimhood. So practicing gratitude as a practice is really one of the things that I say that we're about, is practicing gratitude, even in the midst of the chemo. Finding something to be grateful for. Yeah. So that's what I would advise myself today if I was to reflect back and be able to coach myself back in that moment. I would have said, you know, those, those moments were, at that, that particular time where I went to the administration building, I was 
physically hot. You know, that physically angry, and you could feel the heat. Now, I, I don't feel that way that much these days. You know, my meditation practice, my prayer practice, my gratitude practice, but that doesn't mean that those things don't come up. The guy with the U-turn, you know, I was hot. How many of you were hot this week at some point? How many were hot this month at some point? Okay, so, maybe not this week, but this month. But that really is our goal here. Our, our goal here is to practice gratitude. Our goal here is to practice being free of the negativity by moving ourselves to a place of choice. By moving ourselves to a place of choice, what's the best route there? Gratitude. If you can't close your eyes and meditate it away, if you're out in the, in the safe way and you get upset with somebody in the safe way, in that particular moment, you can't necessarily close your eyes and mm, <laughs> we could. But start counting what you're grateful for. Count them up. Saying one, two, three, four, five. Right there in that moment, you change your body, you change your, you change your brain, you change your chemistry, you change your mood. You take control at that point. Gratitude gives you the pathway back into, I know myself, I know my place of peace. So go the second mile isn't just about doing the work. Go the second mile isn't just about going the second mile. It's about finding the joy in the work. Practice gratitude into that. So, I mean, can you imagine if, if somebody said, if Jesus said, if Jesus really said this, we, we, we think he probably did, but you can imagine if Jesus said, go the second mile, and somebody went, okay, if I have to. <laughs> Jesus would say, not the point. <laughs> You have to do it in gratitude. You have to do it in cho choice. You have to do it in joy for it to actually work. So the shorthand version is go the second mile, but do it in joy. Do it cheerfully. Do it by choice. Say, go the second mile. Go, okay, I will choose to do that. I choose to do that. And then who's in control of your whole life and your whole mood and your whole countenance is you. You get to be at choice in those moments.